time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today in the R Lounge. Ah, teen romance. Today in the R Lounge, a father dares to be the voice of reason. Daughter banned me from her wedding saying I wasn't supportive. I froze my cards and now she's in debt. I, 55 male, am a single father of a 19 year old daughter who's determined to make every wrong decision possible. I thought I'd done my part in raising her to be smart, careful, and self-reliant, but apparently none of that sank in. Here I am, watching her marry a guy who's a walking red flag and wrecking her life, and mine. Maybe this is just one of those tough love stories, but honestly, I'm at my breaking point. Here's the details. Warning, it's a long one, but I think some of you might find it worth the read and maybe give some advice. My daughter, Meg, with all the potential in the world, but no desire to use it, she took two years break from high school, in her words, to find herself. She's always been average in studies, but she enjoys sports. We supported her in everything she wanted to do. Be it her passion for football or baseball, we always had her back. That's why when she said she wanted education break in high school, we supported her. Apparently, she felt overwhelmed by the vast curriculum. We thought not every child moves forward at the same pace, so if she needed time, let's give her that. But those years turned out to be the toughest of my life. Initially, she said she would focus on her game. I expected her to spend more time in practice or on the grounds, but she gave the same two hours as she used to give earlier. She spent the rest of the day watching TV, strolling around the town with the wrong people, and throwing tantrums whenever she was called out. She would even sneak out after I fell asleep. Once she stole my car and was about to sneak out of the town, but was caught by a traffic cop just at the right time. I did everything to bring her back on the right track. She has been seeing a therapist for many years on and off. It took me multiple rounds of late night talks, counselors, and endless vacations and gadgets to convince her to return to school and finish her education. I thought we'd turned a corner and she was finally ready to get her life on track. But as it turns out, that's when the real trouble started. Soon after going back to school, Meg met a guy named Tyler. He's 26 and works as a baker's assistant, delivering pastries to her school's cafe. Nothing against the guy's job, honest work is honest work, but Tyler? Without digging too much, let's just say he's aimless. No plans, no real goals, just a we'll see what happens attitude. Worst, he has been a player. He had been married once when he was 21 and the girl was 20, got separated within six months because they realized it's not working and my daughter has fallen head over heels for this guy. Apparently, he was dating Meg's classmate and then suddenly got introduced to Meg and they hit it off as they say. I was still okay and respectful until it was casual dating, but then she dropped the bombshell. They were getting married. At first, I thought she was just messing with my head because sometimes I get too nosy asking her details about the relationship. Understand this, I'm a single dad of a teenager who's such a rebel. Or maybe she was blackmailing me to get something, but when she told me the details, I absolutely freaked out. They'd even finalized the date, which is next month. She was serious. I was dumbfounded at her decision. She went on about how they were soulmates and that age doesn't matter. In fact, according to her, nothing matters. She's blinded by this fantasy so swept up in the idea of romance that she can't see reality staring her in the face. She's 19, he's 26. She hasn't even finished high school yet and has no plans for the future. The guy hasn't even completed middle school, doesn't have a proper job, works as a delivery guy for his parents' bakery, and here they are, planning their wedding. I asked her, do I have any say in this? And she said I was just allowed to smile and give her away graciously if I wanted to attend the wedding. She kind of said I was lucky to have been informed about the wedding, some of her friends didn't even tell their parents about the wedding until it was done. I asked her if he even had a house, and she tells me that he lives in a studio but is planning to move into a one-bedroom apartment. I said the two of us live in a three-bedroom house with a walk-in closet. Do you think you'd be able to live in a studio? She snapped at me saying, Why not? I hang out here all the time. Why can't I live there? Do you guys have an answer to this? I was done at this point. Hanging out and living are two different things. I tried to knock sense into her that She's yet to complete school. She still lives with me and survives on my credit card. How the heck is she going to adjust to a new and frugal life? She was in no mood to listen. She said she's going to marry whether I like it or not, even if that means hitting a city hall. Helplessly, I said I wanted to meet the guy first. She has agreed to fix a meeting this weekend. Honestly, I'm freaking out. I don't know what to say. I mean, she tells me she's an adult and she can do whatever she wants. Legally, yes, but 19 is still not the right age to marry, at least not in our culture. I immediately called up Meg's mother, and she's another being who just doesn't care about her daughter. She's too busy in her own world. 
Meg's mother and I divorced seven years ago and became co-parents. She soon got remarried, which didn't go down well with Meg. Their relationship got bitter when, within a year of her marriage, she gave birth to a baby girl. Meg felt insecure and neglected upon the baby's arrival. Then a year later, she gave birth to two twin boys, and since then, she has no time at all for Meg. Not to make it worse for Meg, I never dated anyone. I never took matters beyond a couple of dates. I knew she couldn't take it. I became her support system, her constant pillar while her mother was too busy raising her three kids. However, over the last couple of years, precisely after she dropped out of high school, I saw Meg bonding with her mother. It was a relief until I realized the ex was just playing a good cop to compensate for absence and be in Meg's good books. She blindly supported her decision while I became the lecturing dad. She suddenly became Meg's favorite parent, though she barely spent time at her house. I thought maybe if her mom sat her down, it would knock some sense into her. After all, her mother has become the cool parent in Meg's eyes. So I reached out to my ex-wife. She agreed to talk to Meg, but her heart wasn't really in it. She said, if they're in love, we should support them. I was floored. Support them? Support a marriage between a girl barely out of high school and a man without a real job. Not even a plan. We both knew that Meg wasn't ready, but her mom just didn't want to deal with the conflict and sugarcoated her words. Their talk solved nothing except that she volunteered to help Meg in the wedding preps. Now I'm conflicted. Not exactly. I know what I want. I don't want this wedding to happen, but how do I stop it? Can I get some advice on how to deal with this? As hard as it is, this may just be one of those moments where you have to let her make her own mistakes, even if it's painful to watch. But at least you can be there to help her through it, no matter what happens. Update 1. It took a dramatic turn. We'll come to it. It started off when I decided to call in reinforcements. My mother, Meg's grandmother, she's always been sharp and practical. She's in her late 70s, a tough, no-nonsense lady who isn't afraid to tell it like it is. She agreed to come over and talk to Meg. I called for a family meeting, hoping a collective voice from everyone might set her on the right path. When Grandma sat Meg down, she didn't hold back. Marriage isn't just about love. It's about commitment, responsibility, and planning. What do you and Tyler have planned for your future? Have you thought about finances, earnings, family planning? Do you have savings for emergencies? Do you both even earn enough to have a roof over your head? Meg sat there looking uncomfortable, but Grandma didn't let up. She even shared stories about her own struggles, how hard it was in her day to balance family and finances, hoping to make Meg see that love alone was enough. But Meg just crossed her arms and gave her the same line she gave to me. Time has changed. You don't understand. I know what I'm doing. It was like talking to a brick wall. My mom was frustrated and left, saying to me on her way out, She's got to learn the hard way. It's the only thing left. I went to meet Tyler, one-on-one, -on -one, to see what he was made of. We sat down at a diner, and I hit him with a big question. What were his future plans? He shrugged and said, We'll figure it out as we go along. Love is more important than money. I wanted to smack him down. It took every ounce of restraint not to lose my temper. I tried to explain that marriage isn't just about love. It's about building a stable life together. I wanted to give him a chance to show me he had a plan, that he could take care of my daughter. But he just sat there, nodding along like he was listening, when it was clear he wasn't. I tried to insinuate to him about the disaster that lies ahead of their mindless decision. I even suggested that they date for a few years, and then if everything goes fine, then can marry. I put a dagger on my heart and said they could probably live together for a few months before taking this plunge, but none of my suggestions seemed a good option for them. Besides this, every time I said something in a stern voice, I got an angry glare from Meg. Amidst this, he mentioned how his parents also dread about this. It gave me a ray of hope that maybe if I talked to them about it, together we could stop this mess. I invited his parents for dinner the next day. They arrived. Very humble and hardworking people. They echoed my thoughts. They also think it's a bad idea to get married. I realized they too are in a difficult spot like me. After they went, Meg unleashed her anger on me. She said I let her down by voicing my concerns about their marriage. I said I was just discussing this stuff, but she's into her own world. She said I was trying to ruin her life, and she wouldn't let me do that. She got so furious that she banned me from the wedding. She was like, if you can't be supportive, you better stay away from it. I stopped her and asked, Do you hear yourself? She replied, Of course I do. I don't want a grumpy, a sad face to ruin my beautiful day. I was appalled by her words. I asked her, You don't mean it, do you? She clarified that she meant every word of it, and that I'm banned from her wedding because I'm not supportive. She stormed into her room, saying she didn't want to be around a negative energy who didn't believe in her happiness. I was heartbroken. It was a knife in my chest. 
I was left with no choice but to accept it. She didn't want me there, so I wouldn't go. But I wasn't about to bankroll a wedding I wasn't welcome at. I froze the credit card. Yes, she had been planning a wedding with my money. Why should I pay for the wedding in which I'm banned? Within hours, she was blowing up my phone, screaming that I'd ruined everything. She accused me of being selfish, of trying to control her life. I told her calmly that if she wanted to make adult decisions, she'd have to deal with the adult consequences. She went to her mother and asked her to pitch in. Meg really thought her mother, who was a stay-at-home mom of three kids with a solo provider, her husband, was going to pitch in for her wedding. Well, joke's on her. Her mother shed a few tears of helplessness and turned down her request. Meg had already cut off her last option, her grandma. My mother is the last person to fund this stupid wedding. I don't know what she's going to do now, but my instinct says they're going to marry, even if it comes to a city hall wedding. The disaster is imminent. She's not talking to me. We're avoiding each other in the house. As the wedding date is approaching, my heart is sinking. It's just a matter of days when she would leave the house. This day would have eventually arrived, but I didn't want to part with her on such a conflicted note. I think what's the most painful part, though, is that she's choosing to ignore everything you've taught her in favor of this fantasy of love. As for freezing the credit card, well, that's honestly the most responsible thing you could have done. She can't expect you to fund a wedding where you're actively being excluded. Update 2. Thanks for all the love. Really appreciate all the comments and texts I received from fellow parents and dads. Sorry I took a while to update, but here you go. As I predicted, Meg got married despite all the odds, and the situation isn't pleasant for them. After I cut her off financially, she wasn't going to let a frozen card stop her, is she? No. She and Tyler went to the bank and took out a loan to fund their wedding. She rubbed it on my face, saying, You think you can stop the wedding by freezing your stupid card? The wedding is happening as per the original plan, whether you like it or not. I said fine, and let it slide. They borrowed thousands of dollars. They had the venue, the flowers, the catering, and even a small live band. Tyler's family wasn't thrilled either, but they attended, looking miserable the whole time. His dad video called me in between the ceremony. Meg's friends chipped in where they could, even though they didn't think it was a good idea either. A few of her close friends tried to talk sense into her, but she cut them off, convinced they were jealous of her happiness. She was isolating herself from everyone who cared about her, just to hold on to this illusion of a perfect wedding. One of her childhood friends, who is also our neighbor, called me after the wedding and filled me up on the details. She said, Don't you know what happened to her? It's like she's in some fantasy world. I was hurt. Felt pathetic about being banned. I know I was against the wedding since the inception, but I never wanted to miss it. As a girl's dad, your most honorable and cherished moment of your life is to walk your daughter down the aisle, but Meg ripped me off that honor. When she was leaving the house, I slipped a note in her room, wishing her all of the best for her future. That's all you can wish for your children. You don't pray for their doom, right? Even if they're running towards it. As you can figure out, two months have passed since the wedding, and things have already started to fall apart. Last week, Tyler showed up on my doorstep. He looked exhausted, like a man who'd aged a decade in a few months. I was apprehensive to let him in, but I still did. He was dancing around the topic, but I could tell he was struggling financially. He told me he has taken up another job apart from working for his parents' bakery. Meg was also interviewing for jobs, but you know the kind of jobs a high school dropout art tracks, and Meg must have been picky about them. Then he came to the point of saying his earnings weren't enough to make ends meet. Obviously, they're behind on loan payments, rent, and utility bills. He told me they were drowning in debt and asked if I could help them out just until they were back on their feet. I looked at him, remembering how he told me love was more important than money. I told him, no, sorry, I cannot pitch in. If my daughter is so proud to not lose her guard, who, why do I care? I told him they had to figure it out for themselves as he initially said. He looked like I'd hit him, but I didn't waver. He walked away, shoulders slumped. Meg called that night, furious and yelling at me. You humiliated him. He came to you in good faith, and you threw it in his face. I thought you'd support me. I told her, you wanted me out of your life. This is what it means. She called me heartless for letting her suffer by pulling back the support. I said, you know he didn't earn much. How did you expect to continue the same lifestyle as earlier? Her answer shocked me, and it would shock you too. I thought I had your card, but you took it away. So Meg doesn't want me or my advice, but she wants my card. Wow. I said, you know what? You deserve every bit of struggle you're facing. Maybe I protected you too much and overprovided for you. This should serve as a lesson for you. She was screaming something, but I hung up on her. The fallout didn't stop there. Her mom was furious with me for letting Meg suffer and accused me of ruining Meg's chance at a happy life. But I stood my ground. I knew deep down that Meg needed to hit rock bottom before she'd understand. It hurts to know she's struggling, but she needs to face it. 
She needs to learn gratitude and humility, which only tough times can teach her. The lesson I couldn't teach her, maybe her wrong decision is teaching her, but secretly, I wish she'd come out of her troubles. As a father, what else would I wish for her? Only happiness and good stuff, right? Update 3. Another update. Last month, Meg texted me in a panic. It was almost midnight. I was asleep. Her series of text notifications woke me up. Her message was cryptic, and I could barely make sense of it. But she was terrified. My heart dropped. I thought maybe something had happened to Tyler, or that they were facing eviction. I immediately called her. She told me, after a lot of stammering, that she thought she might be pregnant. She was scared and had no idea how they could handle a child on top of their already spiraling finances. She was sobbing. What am I going to do? She was calling me from the bathroom as Tyler was sleeping in the bedroom, and she didn't want to freak him out. I wanted to say, this is what you signed up for, but the father in me couldn't be that cold. I told her that if it came down to it, I'd help her and the baby, but that didn't mean I'd be footing the bill for her mistakes. I asked her to get double sure before breaking this to Tyler. I scheduled her doctor's appointment the next day. She was asked to wait for a week before it could be concluded. Meg lost her mind during that time. She requested me to refer Tyler in my network or maybe hire him in my office. You see, I run a small agency business. My employees are skilled people and Tyler had no real skill, nor acumen to learn one. How do I refer or hire him? I stalled it, saying, let's wait for the confirmation, but she insisted I do it immediately. When I didn't, I had to face her accusations that I was a capitalist and stuff like that. I was almost ready to give in to her pressure, but thankfully I waited, and it turned out to be a scare. She wasn't pregnant. The pregnancy scare wasn't enough to humble her. Instead, it only seemed to deepen her resolve. She became colder and more withdrawn because I didn't hire Tyler. Some of you might also think it was mean of me to not hire him, like my daughter and ex think. But honestly, I feel I did the right thing because in one of the conversations, she blabbered, Why are you being so hesitant? After all, everything is coming to me eventually as your inheritor. I said, no, not necessarily. I might use up all my money by retiring early or traveling. Who knows, I might get married again, and I would need money for all of this. After seeing her narcissism, I would better want to leave everything to charity than to her. I mean, why should I? She didn't listen to me, banned me from the wedding, never apologized, doesn't keep in touch, and if I tried to talk to her, she threw everything I'd done wrong in my face. It breaks my heart, every day. I think about just sending her money, but I know it would only enable her. I'm torn between being a supportive father and letting her learn the hard lessons. Right now, it feels like I've lost my daughter to her own bride. I'm just a dad, sitting here watching her stumble through the worst choices of her life. Maybe, just maybe, one day she'll realize that I was only trying to protect her. Until then, I'm just here, waiting, hoping that someday she'll let go of her pride, see me for the father I am, and come back. What you're doing is important. You're allowing her to experience the consequences of her actions so that one day, she might come to understand why you acted the way you did. The love and support you have always provided her will never change. But sometimes children have to hit rock bottom before they realize what's really important. Hang in there, OP, and keep being the father who's willing to do the hard thing, even when it hurts. It might not feel like it now, but one day, your daughter may come to see just how much you truly had her best interests at heart. Have you ever been in a similar situation? What did you do? Share your stories with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today in the R Lounge. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time, and please put your chair back where you found it.